Hi, everybody. Welcome to the inaugural, inaugural, I shouldn't use big words if I don't know how to pronounce them, should I? The inaugural episode of Suck It Up Buttercup. I'm Janet Bloomfield. I'm hoping that uh, you'll all join me here where I'm going to, I'm learning this, okay? Here's what we all need to know. I have no idea what's going on with Google Hangouts. I'm going to learn on air. This will give lots of haters, lots of faux oh, insults to throw at me. I don't give a fuck. Trust me, you're going to have lots of insults by the time this show's over. This is going to be, you know what I did on Twitter? I love Twitter so much. Those bitches got me thrown off because I outrageously said that Christmas doesn't oppress women. Clearly, I deserve to be kicked off Twitter. It won't last, don't worry. But on Twitter, I would get all these idiots that would come at me and give me things like, five out of every three women are raped every day. And I'd say things like, gee, do you have evidence for that? And then they'd say, suck my dick, you cunt, and run away. <laughs> so clearly, I, I lost big time on Twitter. This is going to be my Google Hangout version of this. Now, I'm here with the Lord Patriarch today. Um, he's going to help me go through the process of learning how to do this. Um, but eventually, what I want to do is I'm going to throw this Google Hangout wide open. Anyone who wants to can come and talk to me. It doesn't mean I'm not going to tell you to fuck off, but anyone who wants to is going to be able to come and ask me any question they want, and I'm going to answer you. And are you gonna, are you going to allow the butter cunts? I'm sorry, the buttercups to uh, come in and and talk to you too, Jenna. All the butter cunts in the world can come and talk to me. They can ask me whatever they like, and I will answer them. And I'm going to ask my viewers, my haters, my fans, everyone else in between, if I get through an episode in which I have not told at least one Holocaust or rape joke. I really, really want to be held accountable for that. This this show, Suck It Up Buttercup, has to have at least one rape or Holocaust joke per episode. This is my personal goal. Let's lead off with, with a great one. Why did Hitler commit suicide? Gee, Janet, I don't know. Why did Hitler commit suicide? Because he got the gas bill. <laughs> That's fucking terrible. That's what you're going to get on this show. Now, today we're just going to talk about a whole bunch of random stuff, but let me tell you right away what's happening next week. Next week, I'm going to be joined by journalist, British journalist, Peter Lloyd. He wrote a book called, called what, is, what is it called? I'm reading it. Stand uh, by your manhood. Stand by your manhood. I'm halfway through it. It's absolutely fantastic, and Peter's going to be joining me next week. Um, to talk about some of some of the ideas in his book, and, and it's truly hilarious for such a serious subject. He he really hit on on a lot of very funny stuff, like funny haha -ha and funny peculiar, ridiculous, insane. What the hell is going on? And um, since we're on funny, peculiar, insane, why don't we start off by talking about Bill Cosby? Can you give us a, just a bit of a rundown on what happened in Hamilton yesterday? Well. Uh, to start off with, for those of you who have been living under a rock, uh, there is some women that said Bill Cosby raped them or sexually abused them or something. They seem to have all uh, gotten out of their repressed memories at the same time. I don't know what, what you call that phenomena, but there is like 20 different women in locations across the world that suddenly, within one week of each other, all remembered to that Bill Cosby had raped them and all decided to call Gloria Allred. Uh, pretty phenomenal thing. Uh, not saying that Bill Cosby didn't do anything wrong, but saying that there is a little bit of stuff like due process in the way you have before anybody can decide if he's done anything wrong. Uh, ABFM sent a crew to Hamilton, Ontario last night uh, to sort of document what was happening and to maybe ask the question ask questions of some of the protesters uh, one thing one really good thing happened uh, Bill Cosby they escorted the disruptors out of the auditorium uh, the people that were there to enjoy Bill Cosby's work went on to enjoy it very much gave him gave them a standing ovation when they left but it's like goodbye get the fuck out of here that's fine and uh, they went on and did their show then we had uh, a lot of exposure 
of Dan Perrins and Attila Benzer, and we have a secret, super secret decoder ring, special secret writer that uh, was also at the event on the inside, and uh, we'll be producing some material that you can read later on the site. But basically what it was is Canada's new version of the lynch mob uh, came out to Hamilton uh, because there's a black dude there that some white women said he raped them. And now they're all out there chanting for his, uh, I don't know, something, death, uh, de unemployment, uh, ostracization, uh, whatever. But that was pretty it. We did, had a bunch of fucktard feminists out there screaming for somebody's head that has not been even convicted of anything wrong, uh, but they felt important enough to go after him publicly and try to damage his reputation and career. And you know, what I find so interesting, all, all due respect to Bill Cosby, I loved the Cosby show, I've seen a few Bill Cosby um, shows, he's he's great, he's funny, he knows what he's doing, he, he's an amazing philanthropist, he's been an amazing supporter of black colleges, black art. Um, he's. With all due respect, nobody gives a fuck about Bill Cosby. Like I, really, honestly, he sold out 1,500 uh, seats in Hamilton last night. You know why he sold them out? Because people are they're taking a stand against this ridiculous feminist narrative that men are all bad, evil, monstrous rapists who will beat you, and women never lie about this shit. And people are getting sick of this narrative. Are women humans? Are they humans? Guess what? Humans can lie. Humans can be cunts. Humans can do all kinds of horrible stuff to each other, and women aren't exempt from that. So all those people that bought tickets last night, I, I think that that was a, it was a political statement. It was people saying, I'm giving this man money because fuck you, and that is so that is so nice to see. That is just so great. It was an act of political solidarity with us and standing against these crazy fucking wingnut feminists who've just taken it too far. They've just taken it way too far. I mean, another sort of related, today there's an article on Jezebel where they asked some men, if you could have sex with women by force and face no consequences, would you do it? Okay, so now there's, and then they, they rephrase the question saying, if you could rape a woman, would you do it? Taking out that whole no consequences thing. Guess what? Men said, yeah, if they could get away with it, they would do it. Now, now go and ask all these women. Go get that same group of people, uh, that same group of students, and ask the women, what kind of shit would you do to men if you knew you could get away with it? What the fuck do you think I would do to Amanda Marcotte if I knew I could get away with it? That's just the dumbest, most leading, ideologically manipulative kind of study. And that's what we see over and over again in this attempt to claim that almost all men are just monstrous rapists waiting to happen. And you know when you look at the researchers, the first thing that comes into my mind is, bitch, please. You really think anyone's gonna rape you? I mean, is this this is all fifty shades of gray. I did a YouTube video about it. This is all about rape fantasies. Statistically, women under the age of 14 or over the age of 30 are not likely to be raped at all. Their statistical chance is zero. It's fucking zero. So you fat middle-aged bitches with women's studies degrees screaming about rapists behind every corner, you fucking <laughs> wish. Please, you wish. You wish Bill Cosby would drug you so you could <laughs> grab a civil suit and take some of his money. Like really, it, and it is so nice to see that just average people who can't even articulate what's wrong with the argument, their backs go up and they get that old fuck you, and they go and they buy fifteen hundred tickets. I I firmly firmly believe that those tickets were bought as an act of political defiance against these bitches. That their day is they're done, they're done. You see that Daily Caller article about Amanda Marcotte being like oh David the new day. The Feminism's David, David Duke. Yes, oh my God. Somebody crawled up Amanda Marcotte's cunt and exploded. It was it, amazing. It really was. I, I very, I'm very much enjoying seeing those particular women who, you know, Amanda Marcotte in particular. I defy anyone to go and find an article she has written where she has not used the word boy or man as a synonym for abuser or rapist. She doesn't identify 
know, when she, she won't identify rapist as rapist. She just uses the word man and thinks that means rapist. And that, that is exactly as incredulous and as disgusting as using the words, you know, Muslim for terrorist. It's, it's not any different. Or woman and for whore. It's really, really nice to see them getting called out on it. Finally, it's about fucking time they get called out on it. You know, I, I got to say that, uh, and I need to ask you this. I, I want to go back for a moment to uh, what you were saying about the rape fantasies. Uh, because I've long, and I've certainly gotten a lot of criticism for this, but I think there's some real truth to that. When I look at what happens at slut walks, when I look at this this obsession about rape from really, really unattractive, uh, uh, often obese women who talk about nothing but rape, uh, how much of that do you speculate is rooted in this Fifty Shades of Grey kind of thing, this sort of... Uh, a uh, repressed desire to be so desired that somebody could not control themselves. And I think there's some truth to that. I really do. I'm not saying, again, for the idiots out there, I'm not saying uh, that anybody actually really wants to be raped or to be harmed. But I, we do know that uh, rape fantasies are common among women. And uh, we also know that uh, there is an obsession with a lot of these ideologues on that all they can talk about is rape as though it's the only thing going on in the universe. It's, uh, you know, hey, what time is it? Rape! Right. Um, <laughs> uh, so what do you think about it? I mean, uh, would you expand a little bit more, Janet, on this thing about uh, maybe some of the unrequited desires uh, of some of these women? Oh, for sure. I mean, let's flip it. You see, how much of it is rooted in rape fantasy? Let's talk about how much of it is not rooted in rape fantasy, and that would be 0.006% according to the Department of Justice. So we're talking like 99.9 .9 plus percent is rooted in rape fantasy. And how, how, what, what, how many copies of Fifty Shades of Grey have been sold? 50 million? I mean, this is such a huge part, such a huge part of women's self-identity. And even the ones who are feminists, who subscribe to patriarchy theory, they can't really shake it off. They can't get out of it. That a central part of their identity is being desired by others. Now, I have this, I'm no biologist, I'm not a scientist. I just have this crazy idea that it has something to do with reproduction and like wanting to carry on the human DNA legacy, but that's probably just patriarchy too. I, I am, I am deeply, I've deep internalized misogyny. So it, it, it's absolutely, almost all of it is rooted in this need to be desired. And, but that takes a little bit of effort. Like not a ton, just a little bit, just a little bit. They're not willing to do that. And rejection is absolutely at the heart of most feminists, I think. That's where it comes out of a place of anger and hurt and the, they can't be princesses. They're not, the princess narrative doesn't apply to them and it makes them absolutely furious. But rather than trying to, you know, get comfortable with themselves as animals almost, that, that wanting to be sexually desired is an essential part of what makes you human. It's how we get other humans. It's, it's something that you're just going to have to deal with and embrace instead of being angry and screaming about it and blaming men for rejecting you, which is basically what they're doing. And they, they do it in the perfect, the perfect irony, right? I rejected you, so you took me by force. Of course, this is all fantasy. This is all fantasy. I mean, on college campuses, less than 1% of women get raped. That's the reality. This one in five, one in four number is complete and utter Barbie math bullshit. Less than 1%. Let's just round that up to 25. Oh. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough, right? I think that's how rounding works. Uh, well, um, yeah, that's, a, that's the school of pulling statistics out of my ass. Yeah. And the, and the sources for that, like that, the, the Ms. Magazine, um, I, I can't remember what that article is called, 
but uh, she didn't call it rape, maybe that, where even the women who, who would say this was, this was a good experience, you know, here's what happened, this is how it played out, and I'm perfectly happy and fine and satisfied, and the researchers were like, oh, well, he didn't ask if he could place his penis in your vagina, so rape, there we go, it's rape. They, I think that Ms. Magazine one is the one that ridiculously counted if a man buys you a drink at a bar, and you guys chat, and he finds out that you're like a fucking whiny cunt, and he walks away and doesn't buy you any more drinks. That's an attempted rape. Because That's Mary Koss's work. Isn't that crazy? How did this insanity ever pass any kind of muster? We've got these women gatekeeping, and they're putting out, they're letting such ridiculous fantasy come through and be presented as facts. This is incredibly dangerous. I mean, we've gotten to the point of this being dangerous. We can see the events that happened in Ferguson inflamed wounds in the in the black community. They inflamed a civil, a little tiny mini civil war in Ferguson. And I actually think the gender wars are getting awfully, awfully, awfully close to that. And you have people like Amanda Marcotte and Jessica Valente who outrageous things like wrapping Christmas presents is oppression. Um, they're, they're dumping gas on a delicate situation and I think it, there is a real possibility that it could explode and of course all the sexists in the audience are going to be, yeah that's right, men are going to lose it and start killing women. I actually think it's the other way around. I do not think we are very far off a mob on campus beating a male student to death over a false allegation. I, sadly, I do not think we are far from that. That's oh, you can see the sidebar of ADFM right now, Janet. There's a man that was falsely accused and he was murdered. Wow. Was he murdered by men or women? Uh, you, I would advise people to go read the story. It was by men. Um, but, I mean, it's the same thing. Proxy violence is done on yes. behalf of, of, the, of the woman. But also, if they go to, to community of wrongly accused, to katwa.org, uh, they will see story after story after story of falsely. One, of, one guy was 18 years old. A uh, 15-year-old said he raped her. Uh, the, another 18-year-old, the, the girlfriend of the girl, a boyfriend of the girl, went to the door, knocked on his door. When the guy looked through the peephole, he shot a bullet through there and shot him in the head and killed him. Um, this has happened lots and lots of times. So uh, I think it's probably they're looking to up the ante on that uh, because, yeah, after all, killing men, uh, that's a good thing, right? Well, of course, you're just taking out a rapist, right? Yep. I, just, I, know that, I know that the proxy violence exists. I mean, women have always done that, right? You try you get men to carry out your, your shitty work, so your Lady Macbeth, right? Uh, that's that's a, a tale as old as time. But I think we're, we are actually at the point where we might see groups of women like that sulky little fucking cunt carrying around her mattress. I mean, groups of women like that who feel, who feel that emboldened that even when the case was investigated, even when no wrongdoing was fun, she still feels like it is her right to drag around, God only knows how much cum is stained into that mattress if it's hers. You probably need gloves to handle it. She feels like she can drag that around and openly call this young man a rapist after she put a process in place and after no wrongdoing was found. That's pretty emboldened. And I think it's a very small step from that to actual physical violence, not proxy violence, not getting someone else to do it on her behalf, but actually doing a Valerie Solanus and, and carrying out real, real lethal violence. Like they're just getting so emboldened. It's disturbing. David Futrell will probably have lots of fun with that. Feminists are going to start killing rapists. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Now, how about, how about we just back up and reconsider what I just said there. These are men who have been cleared of all wrongdoing. All wrongdoing. Imagine if this was me saying, ah, oh, that Korean guy stole my, stole my laptop. You know those Koreans. They got light fingers. I don't know. I don't, there, there aren't even stereotypes about Koreans. But let's just pretend they are. Everyone thinks that Koreans are thieves. He stole my laptop, so I go to the police, and the police are like, no, nah, nothing happened here. No, nope, moving right along there. There's no issue. 
and now I'm going to walk around holding this guy's identifying details up, and maybe she didn't put his name, but everyone fucking knows who it is. The guy actually yes, gave me about what was going on. Yeah. He's there on scholarship, and I think he's from Germany. He's And this this woman has clearly no idea about culture, street culture, and youth culture in Germany, where the, they're very... I, I lived in Germany for oh, six to eight months and did not ever have a German man ever, ever approach me or talk to me or in any way harass me or do anything to me on the streets. Not at all. It doesn't happen there. I mean, there's, there's men in Germany who probably do engage in street harassment, but that's like men everywhere else. It tends to be the low-income ones and not actual middle-class German men. It, it's not going to happen. So she's accusing a man who comes from a culture that does not have any tradition whatsoever of harassing or sexually stalking women in the way that that feminist say rape culture does, right? Men just feel completely free to stalk, harass, rape, treat women terribly, look down on them. And our whole culture supports that. And I love Karen Strawn's observation. I just love this. If we really did live in a misogynistic world. If we lived in a world that hates women, why would being called a misogynist be an insult? Wouldn't it just be normal? I mean, why would you lose opportunities? Why would you get fired? Why would you get taken off of Twitter? Why would you why would anything negative happen to you if we truly lived in a culture that hated women? That accusation would hold it would have no strength then. Who cares? Yeah, so Everybody hates women. That's not the world that we live in at all. Karen just, is uh, Karen's pretty adept with the bricks of logic. Um, unfortunately, her victims, and I use that word very intentionally, uh, are unaware they've been bashed on the head half the time. I don't know if they have nerve endings from the neck up. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's no neural synapses in there. But uh, let me ask you this, uh, going back to, uh, again, and all this sort of overlaps, when you look at the, the fact that the media now, uh, people are buying tickets, uh, I think, I agree with you totally, I think those shows were selling more tickets uh, because people were saying, enough of this shit, I'm going to go and support Bill Cosby. Uh, the protesters instead, and this is really cool for Canada because what we're used to on Canadian universities is that protesters disrupt events and then the campus police come in and ask them very nicely if they wouldn't mind stopping and of course they don't so events are canceled but this time the protesters were led out of the auditorium the the event carried on uh, we got a lot of news coverage for ABFM on that there's several news stories out there Attila Benzer and Danny were doing a great job uh, confronting the protesters and pointing out what was going on and speaking to the cameras about what was happening. We also have uh, a phenomena of, of what we mentioned about this article, uh, Daily Caller running an article calling uh, Amanda Marcotte the David Duke of feminism, which is really just one step away from pointing out to the fact that Jessica Valenti and a lot of others are the same type of individuals. Uh, there is a reaction starting to happen, a, a very definite one, and I think the real danger here is that the the really more, it's hard to say extreme feminist as though that's two different words, but I will say for the sake of argument that there's extreme feminists. Aren't we now in a situation where these really shrill, you know, bacillists out on the edges of feminine feminism are going to become more and more potentially violent as time goes by as they see their sick and stupid ideology get wasted and and stepped on in mainstream media and of course by the likes of us oh I think so I uh, I I feel so sorry for Jessica Valente's husband I'm pretty sure he's getting punched in the face on a daily basis right now because she's just so pissed off like their their intimate partners are at the highest risk of being hurt and injured and yeah, they, they have never been held accountable ever. All of a sudden, this is scaring the shit out of them. I mean, things like Gamergate, that was one of the best, best things that could ever have happened in 2014. Because I think a lot of these people, 
a lot of gamers would have nominally considered themselves supporters or feminis of feminism or supporters of social justice warriors. And then they got a taste of what that actually means. Then they got to see what exactly feminism would like to do. That here is a space created predominantly by men. And yes, there are women gamers. Yes, there are female developers. The vast overwhelming majority of them are men. This is a world created for men, created by men, that men welcome others into, but don't come into this fucking house and think you get to rearrange all the furniture. That's exactly what feminists done. The games that you play are bad. The things that you think are fun are unacceptable. You are going to meet my definition of what I think is fun, of what I think is acceptable. And it's the whole hypocrisy of someone like Anita Sarkeesian making an entire video on how women are damsels in distress in a video game aimed at children, and then faking death threats against herself and damseling, running to the police, crying and wailing, and they all do this. They all do this. All these stupid little feminist game developer idiot social justice warriors. They pretend that they're being threatened and then they damsel. They start crying and wailing for other people to come and rescue them. So this is how you are, but you object to any of that being shown in a video game. And then they make a video about the sexist implications of damseling. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like the hypocrisy is so glaring, it's so huge, it's so big that you have this entire group, this entire demographic category of men and women, the gamers, who I mean, there you'd have to be some kind of stunned cunt to not see the hypocrisy of calling video game characters damseling that's misogyny, and then all of these critics turning around and damseling in real life. It's sort of like the, um, <clears throat> the, the clothing issue, that if a video game character is dressed scantily, that's, uh, that's misogyny, it objectifies her, um, it's unacceptable, this, this encourages rape culture, but women who are walking down the street topless with fuck the patriarchy painted across their tits should not be judged for you know what they're wearing I mean like can can we pick one can we pick one and stick with it that that level of hypocrisy was visible it was visible and when it was combined with actual real attempts at some of these people to come in and start influencing what games adults are allowed to play based on some chicks hurt feeling like we got all of a sudden a whole bunch of people became aware of what modern feminism actually is this is a social control ideology this is a method to shut down all spaces in which men gather all spaces in which anyone gathers to discuss something that is not ideologically approved by feminists. They're not trying to peddle their story and convince us. They are attempting to force this narrative down our throats. And people are resisting. How much money did Gawker lose in ad revenue over their support of these idiot anti-Gamergate people? I mean, I've, I've seen reports that it's as much as a million dollars. Ouch. Oh, Ouch, they, admitted, they admitted to six figures, and I'm guessing that they probably admitted to less, so I'm thinking they got into at least low to mid six figures, three, four, five million before it was over with. They lost huge clients. Yeah, and, and good for them. You know what? If you're going to line up behind an ideology, you better do your fucking due diligence. Do your homework and find out what you're representing. They're just not used to doing that. Or they, they've misrepresented ideologies they don't like for so long long it doesn't even occur to them that it's necessary to go and check what it is that you're supporting and they, they can just spin it out however they want I mean that's basically what they do I mean you have like one or two sentences how many sentences have you written in your lifetime on a voice for men there must be millions of words up there like literally millions and I proclaim November to be bash a violent bitch month is the only set of words they'll focus on. All those other million ones don't count. Nobody reads the original article. But even reading that fucking sentence, bash a, a what? A peaceful? Oh, <laughs> a, a woman minding her own business? 
Oh, a gentle, a sweet, no, bass, a violent bitch. Like, if, even if you're just going to read that one sentence, can you fucking read it, please? Read all <laughs> the words, not every second one. But even this is beyond the ability of almost everyone in the liberal feminist media. Polly Lamb says that men should beat women. Yeah, that's what he said. Mm hmm Thanks for reading. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks for not reading. Hey, can, yeah. I, can I be the, uh, the Dos Equis man for just one moment here? Sure. Um, I'd like to say I don't always play video games, but when I do, I don't allow a joyless, manipulative cunt like Zoe Quinn to choose them for me. Thank you. <laughs> what? You don't want to play Depression Quest? Apparently, it's like reading a book and then you kill yourself at the end. That sounds oh, like. Oh, God, I got a minute. I played it. Oh, my God, how fucking lame was that? You actually played Depression Quest? <laughs> yes, I did. It was a one long exercise of me, 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 me. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even imagine. I, I don't play video games. Technically, I'm counted as a video gamer in feminism because I play Scrabble on my, on my phone. So that makes me a gamer like all those chicks who play Candy Crush. Uh, the funny thing is my husband plays Candy Crush. <laughs> He's gotten weirdly addicted to this game to the point that my daughter's found some little gummy gummy candies that are whatever it is you play on Candy Crush, and he got those for Christmas, and he was excited. <laughs> now, he also plays Call of Duty, and uh, he plays lots of super, super violent video games with my, with my son, and I just, I think this is... It's such an attack. To me, I, I am supportive gamers because I see this as such an attack on men and on masculinity and on men being different and having their own interests. Do I want to play Call of Duty and go in and shoot people with sniper rifles? Actually I do, but it's really, really fucking hard to use those like controller thingies and I don't know how to do it. And I'm I just have other things to do other than learn. I would actually find that fun. But it's not it's it's not you need talent to do this. You need to know how to do it. I have no objection whatsoever to my husband playing these games with my son. Now, my son, who's he's almost nine, he did ask for Grand Theft Auto. Um, I put my foot down on Grand Theft Auto because even though I still think it's harmless and I think it's fun, he's nine years old and I don't think it's appropriate to rob banks and beat hookers to death. When he's 18, he's free to do that. It won't bother me in the slightest any more than it bothers me that my daughters create flocks of sheep and then heartlessly murder them in Minecraft. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. This is an attack not on violent video games. It's not an attack. It's, it's an attack on the kind of games that men specifically like. And this is, what's our word for that? This is just straight up hate. This is misandry. This is feminists peddling a narrative that men are bad, that masculinity is toxic, that we need to destroy it. But please remember that they don't hate men. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just such a, the cognitive dissonance, but I think you have to have that, uh, that cognitive dissonance to even identify as a feminist, and it just takes a little tiny shove to get people to see what the reality is. We saw it with Gamergate, certainly the UVA, the rape hoax, and a lot of these prominent media feminists like Jessica Valente and like Amanda Marcotte coming out and saying it doesn't matter that she lied. And it doesn't matter that she lied. Really. It doesn't. Like how Jolena can you Maxwell led the charge on that. So what if she lied? We can still learn from this. It's it's beyond. It's absolutely beyond. I mean, would would Zerlina Maxwell? Actually, I can answer that. My question was hypothetical, but the answer came immediately. I was going to say, would Zerlina Maxwell think that way if someone accused lied about a black man robbing her? It doesn't matter that she wasn't actually mugged. You know, we need to talk about black men being thieves. But Zerlina Maxwell actually would because she's the first one to throw the men in her own community under the bus. Black feminists, don't even get me started. These women. I don't know how, how do they look in the mirror in the morning? How on earth can they know their own history? And they do. I'm sorry, they're not ignorant. These are women who know their own history, who will look in the faces of black men and accuse them of having privilege. Are you fucking 
kidding me? How do how how can they live with themselves saying shit like that? It's absolutely incredible, and yet here they are all lining up behind the Hollaback video, which is you know basically an excoriation of lower class black men, working class, not necessarily lower class, but definitely working, economically struggling black men, and they're accusing these men of having privilege. Please tell me what fucking privilege it is to live in an inner city in America and be male and be black and have no money. Well, Where I understand, Janet, privilege? but we cannot forget the struggles of attractive white women with big tits in black neighborhoods. That is a scourge that needs to be addressed. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, how she suffered. I think a couple of them said good morning, those fucking bastards. I can't believe it. This is why yeah. I don't put on really tight shirts and go, you know, strolling through Harlem because people might say hello to me. And I already have post-traumatic stress disorder from Twitter, as we all know. Yeah. It was like combat, really. One time someone was, like, mean and put up a little tiny emoji of a gun. I almost died. Couldn't sleep. It was terrible. <laughs> Where's your Kickstarter on that? I mean, I don't understand it. You have the vagina. Uh, I know. I really, I have not raped any of my supporters for cash yet. I have, however, never in my life requested consent to touch a man's penis, and therefore I am in real life a rapist. I have not wallet raped, but I have physically, I have sexually, I, all my sex are rape. I have never once asked permission to, you know, touch a penis. Just never, would you mind if I, <laughs> the words just never came out. It's all rape, all of it. It's all right, let's talk about this affirmative consent is that it's literally turning virtually all normal sex into rape. What is rape if all sex is rape? What's the point there? Well, uh, that is the point for all sex to be rape. <laughs> In terms of what the ideological drive is, is that they want to make sure that any sexual act that occurs can be defined as a right for the convenience of the woman who perhaps initiated it. Uh, you just, you know, you never know what it's going to turn out to be, but you can't miss an opportunity to have a probable right charge at the end of any sexual encounter, uh, which is what we get from this yes means yes thing. I mean, there are very few things that shock me anymore, but this bill in California that passed into law that basically turns every sex act into sex because people don't do that. They don't go from can I touch your left breast to I can I touch your right breast? Can I take your top off? Can I insert my penis in your vagina? That is not how sex happens between human beings. It is 99% nonverbal communication. I don't need a California statute to tell me that the girl sitting in my lap dry humping my leg, pushing her tongue into my ear, wants to have sex, okay? Uh, but that is essentially what the law is saying, that you have to stop all that and let's get out, let's get the lawyers and, and, and have them talk. Uh, but the, the whole point of that is to make any sexual encounter uh, qualify for a rape charge. And it is the fact that this society is just standing there with their thumbs up their asses. The men too, this isn't about just women by any means. Uh, the whole population just standing there and watching this happen. Oh Lord, don't get me started. This is your show, not mine. Yeah, well, this is where feminists being allergic to logic comes in handy because they were dumb enough to write the law as gender neutral. Now in practice, we know that this is meant so that women can define any sexual encounter as rape, as you said. And it's not just me, I put my penis in your vagina. You're literally supposed to check with every thrust if it's still okay or whether or not consent has been withdrawn. I mean, it gets down to that level. And men have been convicted for an additional thrust. The first 360 were absolutely fine. That last one, that was rape. I didn't want it. I didn't actually tell him, but, you know... Uh, it was rape. And men have been convicted for this. But they're dumb enough to write the law as gender neutral. So here's my personal pledge. The first man in California that wants to charge a woman with rape, I will do your Patreon. I'll do your Kickstarter. I'll do your GoFundMe. I will 
I will get out there and I'll film the video to raise money to help you nail the bitch down because I would like to see, I'd love to see this law used against women. Women do not ask for consent from men. The assumption is, is that's men's job to ask. Men need to figure out what women are thinking, what women are feeling. Gosh, that kind of sounds an awful lot like, oh, patriarchy, doesn't it? If, if you're responsible for my feelings and what I want, I mean, should you vote for me, maybe? Should you control my bank accounts, approve my credit applications? I mean, if I am not under any obligation to tell you what I think, what I want, what I feel, and I can throw you in jail if you fail to secure that information, if I can convict you, why should I have any power at all? If you're held responsible for my decisions, then why shouldn't you make them all? It's absolutely ridiculous. Here you have feminists saying, we're going to fight the patriarchy by bringing back the patriarchy. <laughs> oh, okay. that's been the trip all along. They're he or she. Them. Yeah, that um, sounds like equality. That doesn't sound like patriarchy at all. No, no, no. That's no. why these, these idiots are out there screaming about needing male allies all the time. Feminism started out being about women's independence and doing it on their own, and then they found out they couldn't do jack shit on their own, so they're saying, men need to be our allies. It's, it's like, okay, so we're back where we started. Exactly, and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's, oh... And you know, this is where I would love to, once we figure out how this whole thing's going to work, I would love to throw it open. Anyone get in here and ask me questions. Ask me to clarify things. Question what I'm saying. Ask me or, or you know, be critical. You're welcome to do it. And I think that this show is going to evolve into a real um, conversation about these issues. Not just me talking. You know, when I talk on my blog, I get certain comments. It's very one-sided. And I think we're at a point in the culture now where we can have these conversations. We can have these conversations openly. There's enough people who, who know enough about the issues to really get something fantastic started. So I hope this show is the beginning of that. Um, we're starting to get splintering inside the men's human rights movement. As, as people factionalize, and I actually think as, as difficult as that is and as painful as it can be, it's also good. It means that we're getting big enough that different areas can emerge, and some of those, some of those factions are going to fight each other. Um, but I don't think that, let's take that MGTOW community that likes to get very critical of me for being a traditionalist. Um, Come, come and join the show. Come and talk to me. Ask me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them. I mean, I'm not going to lurk on anyone's YouTube channel and watch their videos, but face to face, one on one, you and me, right here and now, get in here on this hangout and ask me the questions that you have. I mean, there's one, I have over a million, I don't know how many words you have on your blog, but just like the bash of violent bitch. I have over a million words on my blog. Over a million. There's more than 500 posts. Lots of them are way bigger than 2,000 words. There's well over a million. And some, uh, a different, uh, one little subsect inside the MGTOW community got one paragraph, maybe 30 words. 30 words out of millions. Well, not millions, but over one million. <laughs> we don't need to get, get too, uh, too much into hyperbole here, but they find this one paragraph. And I thought the accus accusation was so absurd, I basically just ignored it. Like, oh, whatever, this is ridiculous. Anyone who thinks that I advocate for men to be women's slaves hasn't read fuck all of my work and doesn't know anything that I'm doing. So I just ignored it. But just a few days ago, I went back and I actually looked at the article that I wrote. It was about the, the bride who shoved her husband off a cliff and then left him there to die. And she was up on first degree, no, she was up on second degree murder charges, where my post was really about why the hell isn't she up on first? I mean, this was premeditated. Hey, honey, look at this view. Isn't this sweet? Off he goes. She planned it. She picked a spot. I mean, how could they not make this fucking charge stick? That's what the story was about. And then I started talking about patriarchy, formal power versus informal power. The idea that patriarchy harms and enslaves women is completely fucking trash because women have informal power. What the patriarchy allows is for women to shove 
men off of cliffs and face no consequences. It doesn't harm women, it protects them from the consequences of their actions up to and including killing men. They get protected from the consequences of those actions by the so-called patriarchy. At no point anywhere in this post do I say, oh yeah, that's fantastic, oh, I love it, let's have, a, yeah, I want to be able to kill any man I want and not face consequences. Let's bring back traditional power. It, it, it was an absurd. And the, the most ridiculous irony is that they're doing, this little community is doing the exact same fucking thing all the little social justice warrior critic assholes do. They take one, one very tiny, small snippet of writing. They pull it out of its context. They do not refer to the context that it was in. Then they twist it, deliberately obscure the meaning to promote their own ideology. There's no interest in truth. There's no interest in what what the point of this was, why this was written, all they want to do is they've decided, and in my particular case I think I've got some fucking jealous mean girl shit going on, and it was just an attempt to paint me in the worst possible light so that people would think I wasn't a supporter of men's rights, that here I am trying to, I'm trying to enslave men so that I'm allowed to push them <laughs> off cliffs in the face of the consequences. <laughs> now there are a few men I would love to push off a cliff. This is true. This is true. <laughs> oh, hey, club miners heaven there. Let the yeah. US community come after that one. They'll slice that two seconds out and make a, yeah. a whole video off of it. Really nice a really nice quote, the patriarchy allows women to push men off a cliff with no consequence. Okay, you can cut that one and, and use that to show how I support that. How I'm like, I totally think that's fantastic. That's the best thing I've ever heard. It's such fucking garbage. It's such garbage. The whole traditionalism MGTOW thing is, it's as illogical as feminism. Feminism is about giving women choices. Unless you want to be a stay-at-home mother. Or a, or a hooker, or get married when you're young, then that's the wrong choice, and you can't make that choice. I mean, that's or right a female MRA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't be a female MRA, you are not a feminist, that's not one of the choices you're allowed. And here's MGTOW, men going their own way. So if you as a man sit down and decide the best thing for you in your life and the way you want to go is to get married, you're not allowed to do that, because you have to go the way we say you have to go. You can't just go your own way. The whole philosophy of men going your own way is you have to go the way I tell you to go. What the fuck? What, I think how it's fair to even make a, 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 a clarification there that uh, that these guys, I mean, they call themselves MGTOW, and I can't argue with their right to do that. If they say they're MGTOW, they are, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but this particular band of idiots uh, out there don't strike me as representative at all of MGTOW philosophy, not the MGTOW philosophy uh, that I've read. It's uh, stuff that these guys have begun writing in YouTube comments as they go along, uh, as they react to each thing that offends them deeply. Uh, but this isn't about MGTOW to me. MGTOW to me is still a very important part of our cultural shift. I think it'll eventually have a positive impact in terms of restoring some balance between the sexes. But this particular band of ideologues they basically just called themselves MGTOW. What they are is social justice warriors, just like you said. They're feminists uh, in, in terms of their behavior and actions, and uh, they have just enough spine to attack the pe people who are not their real enemies. Um, and that's all I'm going to say on that for yeah. today. It's such a shame because I have a lot of um, MGTOW commenters on my blog and I don't see this kind of craziness at all. What I see is that the entire philosophy, right at the heart of the philosophy is that it is a man's choice what he wants to do. Whether or not you choose to get married is part of your way and you define that way. This is about removing the social expectation that men must get married, that men have to support families. No, if you choose to, if that is your way, your choice, the way you want to live your life, you are free to do that. You are also free to make any other goddamn choice you want. This craziness about, you know, if you live with a woman or if you're married to a woman, 
you be having to pass some sort of ideological purity test, it, it immediately shows you that they've, they've gone off the same deep end that social justice warriors and feminists have gone up. Tone policing, deciding what specific word you're allowed to use. I mean, how hilarious is that? Come and join a movement called Men Going Their Own Way and we will tell you down to the last syllable what you're allowed to say. I mean, they're not going to win. They're not going to destroy this MGTOW movement because it's an essential part of freeing men from gender ex the, the expectation of gender roles. There is nothing wrong with gender roles. There is a lot wrong with the expectation that men have to embrace them the way that anyone decides. No one gets or, to decide. Or that women have to. Uh, uh, it is, uh, I agree, I've, all I can say is I agree and I find it particularly ironic that some of the, uh, the most vociferous uh, dogma about this stuff is emanating from the mouth of someone <laughs> who is living with a woman who has basically got him on a leash and instructing him what to say, but I don't want to get too far into that, I just, I laugh about that whenever I think about it. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that's uh, I would your show, but I guess that's enough time to give to these guys. Um, uh, not yeah, worth it. It's not worth it. Not worth the time. I don't watch any of those silly videos and stuff. I I just wanted to address the fact that you know it. If there are questions from men going the wrong way, if you would like clarifications, if you want to talk to me about what I think, I'm more than willing to do that. And this is the forum that I hope is really going to take off. Now I am going to need to, uh, you know, watch a few YouTube uh, videos on how to use fucking Google Hangouts. Um, oh, we're going to play mistakes. White Knight and walk you through that. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Here's the patriarchy oppressing me again by doing all my fucking work for me. <laughs> well, I had to have a patriarch instruct me on how to do it a few times to get it right. Uh, so what else, Dana? What do you? What do you? Let me ask you a couple of questions before we close out here. We're uh, good lord, an hour passes quickly. Uh, what do you, What is your hope for doing this program? I know what my hopes are for your doing this program, and I want to say uh, at the end a couple of things. I want to make some remarks about the language you, you've used here and such. But what is the, the intent of this for you? Okay, the intent is simply to get the message out there, but I want to do it in a very specific way. I am in a space. I am in a space on a men's rights website that was created by men. I am a welcome guest here. This is, it's actually one of the most amazing experiences I've had working with everyone at A Voice for Men because you seriously are judged on your actions and that's it. You live and die by what you do, what work you do. That's how your value is determined. So I want to get our message out there, but I want to do it in a way that respects the fact that I didn't create this space. I think women have this tendency to think that they get to march into any fucking room and decide where the furniture goes. They will decide what tone is correct. They will decide what language is acceptable. And they mostly tend to be prissy fucking little cunts you don't want to listen to. So I'm using language. If I call a woman or a man, if I call anyone a whore, if I call you a bitch, if I call you a cunt, if I tell you you're a fucking retard, I am letting you know in no uncertain terms that you will not dictate the terms of this conversation. This is not your conversation. This is my conversation and I will decide. And your feelings, and this is particularly addressed to feminists and social justice warriors, your feelings about my words don't matter one fucking bit to me. I will judge you on your actions and your actions alone. So this is about putting some edges on, on my little corner here and getting our collective message out there doing it in a way that respects the history of where I come from. The men's rights movement has never been about sugarcoating truth. This is about straight up truth. This is the reality. This is what you're dealing with. We are not going to give you a spoonful of sugar. The medicine's going down whether you like it or not. And that's part of what I want to do here. I think that it is it's, it's a conversation that the, the broader world is ready to have and if the fact that I call people whores or cunts or I use language that they don't think is appropriate, if that chases them away, good, because you're not the people I want to fucking talk to. You're not open-minded enough. The very fact that anyone thinks they can come in here and start telling me what words I'm allowed to use, go fuck yourself. 
go find a hug box. This is not a hug box. This is where you are welcome in here, but you will get called on every single thing you say and do. I'm going to judge people. That's what I do. I'm the judgy bitch. So don't show up here and say, oh my god, you're such a judgy bitch. Like, no fucking kidding. <laughs> Read the website, all right? Figure it out. <laughs> Read my name. Or you could do a Walter White, what's my name? <laughs> Which part of judgy bitch did you not get? So I want to talk to the people who are already like on the on the edge of awareness, on the edge of who already understand that they don't get to come in and tone police. And anyone who thinks that they get to tone police, any other adult can just fuck off. They're not worth my time. They're not worth anyone's time right now. They've, they've got to mature by themselves until they can get to the point where this conversation matters. Now there are women like Karen Strawn who's just so calm and so rational and she's hilarious and her, her logic is biting and it's deep. She represents another way of approaching this and I think all of it, there's room for all of us here. It's a big couch, there's lots of room, we can all get up here and squabble and use our own voices and, and it, ultimately I think it's going to be really fun. I think it'll be really fun and I'm looking forward to opening, I'm looking forward to haters because haters are fun. They're usually just so fucking dumb. It's, it's, it's almost like teasing disabled children. I kind of feel ashamed sometimes. <laughs> But then I realized they're adults, and suck it up, buttercup. Welcome to the world. <laughs> I'm going to add a couple of things to that, and I think it just sort of generally explaining what's going on here today. Uh, I, I'm really sure that this is the uh, first hangout where I have dropped the C word with this much repetition, repetition, um, and I hope that continues. Here's the deal, and I just want to make this clear to everybody. Uh, the feminist pearl clutching over the word cunt is Victorian nonsense. We have had gendered insults, calling people dicks, pricks, uh, assholes, uh, uh, well that's not particularly gendered, uh, but uh, bitches. This has been a part of the culture forever. And what happens, there's something sort of super s snowflake special about the word cunt that, that suddenly you can call somebody a dick, you can call them an asshole, you can call them a prick, you can call them a bitch, but cunt? You said cunt? And then all the feminists clutch their, oh my god, you called her a cunt! And that is so low, you just can't do that, you just don't do that. Well, yeah, guess what, you know, Victorian England would have told you the same thing. Uh, so much for your busting gender roles and your uh, putting everybody on a level playing field. You're a bunch of pearl clutching Victorian shrills. Um, so you're going to see the word cunt here. It's going to be used, uh, uh, if I know Janet, and I do know Janet, it's going to be used uh, with some regular frequency here. I would suggest getting used to it. You're also going to hear humor at times that may offend some people. Uh, shit, you know, I've got a whole garage of don't, about don't give a fuck about that too. Uh, the fact of the matter is that we have gone so brain dead, so crazy, and so robotic in this society that we have begun to say, and I'll, I'll give an example, a brief one, and I'll turn it back over to Janet to close. But I remember hearing 30 some odd years ago, and I'm going to tell a, a tasteless joke here. Um, There's a guy that went to the doctor, and he said, look, my wife is acting really strange, and uh, her mind is going, and, and I don't know whether she has Alzheimer's or tertiary syphilis. And the doctor said, well, here's what you do. Uh, when you get home, send her out the front door. If she finds her way back, don't fuck her. <laughs> and I heard that joke two days after my father died of Alzheimer's. Um, and I have to admit that when I heard that joke, I had a streak of pain that went through me uh, uh, about my father's death. And there was a part of me instantly that felt like, God, there was just something so totally unfair because how could you know who out there has been affected by something? Folks, life is rough. 
that's the way life is. The way human beings handle tragedy, the way they handle terrible things is with humor. That's what happens. It's a way to de-stress. It's a way to find a way to, to live at peace with the reality that there are very, very negative things in life that happen. Nobody told that joke to hurt my feelings. Nobody told that joke as a personal affront, and nobody should be prevented from telling that joke. And the moment, and we've already gone way down this road, the moment that we get into that realm of thinking, uh, oh my God, Judge Mitch made a joke about the Holocaust. Like I'm sure this will make that'll make it. That joke will make it to Futrell because he's an opportunist that sees, oh look, anti-Semite. No, she's not. You stupid fuck. Uh, She's absolutely not. She made an offensive joke to make a point, and uh, she's going to make a lot more before this is over with. So if you want to hear Judgy Bitch Raw and uh, Judgy, Bish, Judgy Bitch Unplugged um, uh, to the point that uh, you get the real basics of, of what her shtick is about and what her attitudes, and she's got a lot of biting seriousness underneath all this, you come back and visit this show. If you hate me, you get other people because it's going to be judgy bitch and somebody different all the time. I hope I get a chance to come back again. Uh, but if you don't like this show, the only thing I su suggest is that Mary Poppins is probably somewhere on your Dish TV, and you can go watch that. Um, and with that, I'll get off my soapbox and let Janet wrap this thing up. It's, a, it's an excellent suggestion. I, I just want to remind the professional victims that if you don't like this show, you don't have to watch it. You can you can find Mary Poppins. You'll be fine. Now, next week, I'm going to be joined by Peter Lloyd. Stand by your manhood. If you have not got this book off of Amazon, I highly recommend it. I'm about halfway through right, through right now. I can't wait to talk about... His neo, how do you say this word? A new word, neologism. I, I can read it, but I can't say it. Anyway, uh, I, I, don't th I don't think that's a new word. He's got a lot of new words, like Gal Qaeda, that I just fucking <laughs> love. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shut up, Paul. Don't wreck it. Don't wreck it. We're going to talk about some of his fantastic great words and how he can take su subjects that are really quite serious, like male suicide and male health, and turn them. He, he he can make them hilarious. He brings there's there's such um, an emotional depth and yet humor to the stuff that he writes about. It's really fantastic. I don't think I've I've read a better book about uh, men's issues than than Peter's books. I'm really looking forward to having him on next week. Um, hopefully there will be an opportunity for some people to join in the call and and. Um, add some thoughts or add some ideas. We'll see, though. The one-on-one -on -one with Peter might not be the best day, but we'll, we'll see. We're going to figure that out. And eventually, we're going to get to the point where I just throw it open, and anyone who follows this Google channel will be able to talk to me. I'm looking forward to that. Um, just remember, it's going to be rough sometimes, and your job is to suck it up, buttercup.